In studio, Kenny May. Now, Kenny, was it four years ago, Kenny? Five? Uh, more than that. It was back in uh, 2016, 2017. Oh, goodness. We're going back six, six seven years now. Kenny mm -hmm. was a uh, news director here for a little while while he was trying to get himself through Shepherd University, working his way through school. I can respect that. I did that as well. And now is in law school. Are you at WVU? Yes, sir. Very good. And in your final year? Uh, about, yes, about to go into my third year. About to start your last year at law school. All right. What have you been concentrating on in your uh, your days as a lawyer here, lawyer-to-be? Uh, uh, a lot of family law, uh, some estate planning, basically just trying to figure out the best way I could serve people. I mean, that's why I went to law school in general. Uh, was back in 2020 during the pandemic, I ended up switching gears from working in uh, theater as an audio engineer to working over at WDVM up in Hagerstown, mm -hmm. back when they were in Hagerstown, right. uh, as a production grunt. And while I was there, the stories that we had uh, from West Virginia were just more and more stories about West Virginians getting exploited, whether it was by out-of-state corporations, uh, 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 some of our elected officials. It just it seemed like West Virginia was not taking care of itself like it needed to. It wasn't looking out for its interests. Mm -hmm. And that inspired me to do something to help, and that's why I went to law school. So you decided to go to law school and now to run for the House of Delegates in the 97th. This is John Hardy's seat. John Hardy is not running for re-election. He's going to explore an opportunity to, to run for county commission. Uh, but uh, Kenny on the Democrat side for the House of Delegates. So let me ask you a question here. If you win and you're in law school and you have to go in January – become a member of the House of Delegates and do your 60 days down there. How does that work with law school? So the election uh, it will be after I graduate, I believe. Well, that's true, because you got to go May. Yeah, May's the primary, so yes. you'd be fine. Yeah, yeah okay. so uh, hopefully I'll know uh, by May what I'll be doing for the summer, and hopefully it will be continuing my campaign. Well, very good. So uh, those are some of the reasons why you want to run. Why uh, Democrat as opposed to Republican? So one of the biggest things that I was looking for, uh, I was originally, honestly, I was originally considering an independent run, but then when I was looking into that, I realized that I, I'm not in the uh, f financial or situation where I would be able to finance my, fully finance my own campaign, so I needed to look for that party support. And when I was looking into it, I realized that the Democratic side more aligned with what I want, the vision I had for West Virginia, because uh, the core of my platform is working to improve labor rights, workers' rights, especially those in like the public sector, for, like, for example, teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, so my goal was to work for them, and I, was, I knew some friends that were in the Democratic Party, so I started talking to them, uh, and they said, go for it. Now, it's obviously a state that is very red. Very. The, the, the uh, Democratic uh, the minority party leader, Doug Scaff, has just stepped down in the legislature as the minority party leader, and there is a lot of speculation that he is going to switch parties. The Democratic Party right now in the House of Delegates is less than a dozen, mm -hmm. and it may be getting worse. How can you get elected as a Democrat in this state right now and make any type of change? So the biggest thing, the biggest goal that I have uh, to, in order to try to flip this seat is to appeal to the more moderates, because a lot of the people in the sort of the central range on the political spectrum Honestly, they're getting tired of both sides, and especially the fact that no one seems to want to work together. That's what West Virginia needs right now is people that are willing to work together to find common ground and bring the sides together so we can actually get things done. And that is my goal as a, a potential delegate is to sort of be, is try to become the bridge, try to work together with both sides to get things done, to get West Virginia back on track. Couldn't you do that better, actually, as a Republican, by taking by taming the far right wing of the party? I mean, the Republicans own the state house right now, mm -hmm. so it would just seem to me that to be a calming influence within the Republican Party, would, you'd have a you'd have at least a larger voice to make change than being the the one of the lone voices out in the Democrat side. One of the one of the other reasons that I decided to run with the Democratic. Uh, party instead of the Republican side is, f for one, with my background in theater, with my background in working in the media, things like that, I wasn't entirely sure how serious of a candidate I would have been taken uh, by the Republican Party. I've also had some friends who have attempted uh, to get involved with the Republican Party, and they've given me some mixed experiences around here. 
Uh, for example, uh, a good friend of mine that I've been talking to, uh, Mike, Mike Wachinski, at one point tried to run for mayor, uh, and he was turned down by the Republican Party until he had gotten pretty good, pretty good into his independent campaign, and then they tried to come back to him. Uh, so that, and also working with the minority party, it one of my goals, even if I don't win the campaign, is to help sort of be an inspiration to try to get more people involved especially people around my age group because to be fair a lot of my age group have sort of either drifted out of the state or have s s not exactly apathetic but my generation is not looking is needs some inspiration to get moving a lot of us feel like we're stuck a lot of us feel like there's not much we can do and my hope is to change that and working with a minority party would make that story even more inspiring in my opinion so why do you think, I mean, going back to 2016, I guess, right, was, was the huge switch from, from going from blue to, to purple to hardcore uh, red? Why? What do you think is, what happened to the Democrat Party here within the state or what happened to the perception of the party that made so many people flee toward the right? Honestly, I've actually given that a lot of thought. And I think, I think the reason that the Democratic Party lost the more rural states like West Virginia is pretty deeply co centered in the fact of they've changed their priorities. They who? Uh, the, the Democratic Party as a whole. Uh, when the perception of the Democratic Party went from more like the Senator Byrd style Democrats, the working men, uh, like back when the Democrats supported the unions and still had the unions supporting them, that was when the Democratic side was more appealing to rural America because it seemed like they cared and supported the rural America. When d the Democratic Party started getting seen more as the uh, more a little bit more elitist, a little bit more of like the liberal intellectuals and things like that, I feel like that is why when the Democratic Party lost rural America is when they started when they they left the rural America, I think, feels left behind by them. And then that is when they started switching to the Republican side. Matt Harvey. Well, Kenny, uh, congratulations on your decision to uh, attend law school, and you're almost done. Um, labor rights, you cited as the, um, uh, the, the I guess, the pr your priority for the reason why you're running for Correct. office. What other priorities do you have besides the labor rights? So, aside from labor rights, which, as I said, are the main focus, the two biggest things I want to see in West Virginia is, A, we just need to bring, we need more people in the states. And while we have programs like Ascend West Virginia, which has been doing a good job at attracting people, I've heard plenty of stories of people. Well, that's a private yes. endeavor. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but the biggest reason that I've heard from people that have considered moving here but decided not to, almost always the reason is education. Our education system is not in great shape right now. And, and do, you, do you mean like at the, like the, like the schools or – obviously the schools, but the, the high schools, or do you mean like the collegiate level? Uh, high schools. Okay. I, I have some opinions about the collegiate level as well, but uh, specifically it's the high schools. It's the high school stuff. That's the reason I've heard from multiple people who have considered coming to West Virginia. That was the reason they didn't, was our public education system. And from my perspective, one of the biggest reasons why our education system is the way it is, is we are not supporting our teachers enough. I went to Shepherd University for my undergrad, and I had plenty of friends, and even a, my sister, who was in the, who were in the education department. Shepherd is creating amazing teachers. Unfortunately, nothing is keeping them in West Virginia. They're hopping across the Potomac, or they're going over into Virginia, because they take better care of their teachers. So, do you think locality pay would help uh, keep and attract teachers in the Eastern Panhandle? I mean, I think that just better pay in general. Uh, and also more support. Honestly, it would be great to have to allow teachers to have to use some of the school funds for equipping their own classrooms, so they don't have to worry about taking care of those expenses themselves, especially with how low their salaries are. Locality pay might help, especially in areas like the Eastern Panhandle where it's so close to other districts that would be able to just easily jump across and still live in West Virginia. However, across the board, it needs work. Across the board, teachers need higher pay. 
Kenny, winning a campaign takes money. Mm -hmm. How have you found fundraising to be so far? Well, I've just filed for uh, my pre-candidacy papers this week, so I haven't f gotten into full swing yet uh, with the fundraising because currently I'm still waiting for that to get processed so that I can start collecting donations. Uh, but I've got some plans in the work. I've been working with a couple of friends of mine who have been volunteering their time to help me out a bit. Uh, I'm uh, going to be reaching out to a couple of organizations for some possible endorsements. I think I'll be talking with uh, West Virginia Can't Wait in a couple weeks. Uh, the biggest thing I'm going to be worried about for fundraising is just how much can I get done this year, mm -hmm. especially since uh, I believe I believe there's a chance that my uh, run will be contested in the primary. I'm not sure who, but I believe it will be contested, so I need to make sure I get fundraising done. And the other difficulty will be, since I'm splitting my time between Morgantown and here uh, while I'm finishing up law school, being able to fundraise from a distance and being able to find time to be back here meeting the constituents, meeting, talking with people, and getting their support. Let's talk about the 97th, Kenny. Uh, what percentage of the 97th is Berkeley, and what percentage is Jefferson? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Give me one moment. All right. and I, I think it's about 70-30. 70 Berkeley, 30 Jefferson? I think that's what I've heard uh, John Doyle say on this program, okay. I think. Have you met with Tammy Offit uh, on the Berkeley County side, or have you talked to John Doyle on the Jefferson County side? I have, I have not talked uh, to Miss Offit. I've been uh, I've tried to reach out to her. I haven't judged schedules haven't linked up. Tammy, uh, I'll send you Kenny's number right after the show. Uh, I believe last time I talked to John Doyle might have been when I w when I was working here. Uh, this has been a while. Yes, yeah, it's been it's been a little bit. Well, from what I understand, John's listening right now. I think it would be a good conversation to have from a guy that served in the house for mm -hmm. I think 22, 26 years somewhere around there. Uh, recently, I've actually been. Uh, in a bit, a bit more contact with uh, used to be delegate, also used to be magistrate uh, Unger. Uh, I've had a couple Unger. of conversations with him because uh, one of the one of my mentor figures at the law school who has sort of encouraged me to pursue this path, uh, Dan Kimball. He used to serve in the in the West Virginia legislature as mm -hmm. one of the attorneys, uh, and he has been pushing me. He's been uh, guiding me to meet certain people and get in touch with them. Uh, he's been trying to schedule a time for me to meet with uh, Mike Pushkin, mm -hmm. uh, as well as some of the other delegates. Are you a Berkeley County resident or Jefferson? Uh, Jefferson County. Okay. And in regards to the Democrat-Republican breakdown in the 97th, do you know the percentages on that? Matt, Harvey, do you or Kenny know what percentage of that registered voters? How no, uh, if John or if one of the Johns were listening, they would they would know that pretty pretty handily mm -hmm. if i remember correctly i did look at the uh, previous election results and i think last year uh i think the democratic candidate for the 97th was phil wenner right. i believe he lost by i think like 10 to 20 percent yeah uh, i don't think it was particularly close right yeah i mean nowhere in west virginia was it close mm -hmm. it, it was almost a sh shut out across the board so kenny why now it just seems to me if you're in law school you've got all these distractions you're splitting your time between morgantown and here why not wait for one more election cycle and then you can just you can concentrate with what's magical about this particular cycle what's magical about this is it is that transition period it's it's coming to the end of one chapter and starting another this seems like a good time to get started with this get my name out there and make the, make the attempt if if I'm successful, then great. Then I'll be able to start serving right away. I'll be able to start the ball rolling on my ideas. If I'm not successful, this gives me the foundation for the next election cycle when I'm less torn in every single direction. Well, assuming that I'm not continuing to be torn in every direction. Life as a lawyer is not, a, not exactly calm, as I'm sure uh, Mr. Harvey is <laughs> well aware of. Uh, but overall, this felt like the year to do it. I'm finishing up law school. I'm making the transition. I'm coming back up here full time as soon as I graduate. Yeah. You used a phrase a couple of times and that you want to concentrate on labor rights. What does that mean to you? What what rights does labor not have or does whatever? <laughs> the biggest thing I want to work with is a, supporting the trade unions, making sure that they are not, making sure that they have a fair bargaining position with their employers. Do sure, they not now? It depends. 
it depends on the situation. I know that uh, f that West Virginia is a right to work state, uh, which means that non-union employees at union shops do not currently have to pay any union dues, e even while the union is representing their interests. They don't have to pay for what they're not getting. Right. Yeah. Well, the, that that's if they if the union elects to represent the whole body and not allow mm -hmm. other unions to come in. Then they have to represent everybody. Yes. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to work on is uh, I do want to work in, in traditional Democrat fashion. I do want to work on minimum wage uh, issues. I want to try to increase it. But specifically, the idea that I've been working on with a friend of mine, because West Virginia has a lot of small businesses. And while we do want to raise the minimum wage, I don't, I don't want to make it more difficult to run a small business in West Virginia because West Virginia is, I mean, I spend a lot of time in Shepherdstown and Shepherdstown is almost all mom and pop shops. They're almost all small business owners that are barely making it work as it is. And I don't want to make things harder for them because I enjoy the West Virginia's entrepreneurial spirit that we seem to have. We seem to, we, we always seem to be looking for new ways to work. So that, would you, would you <clears throat> seek to not hurt small businesses by putting a uh, a cap on the or, or or at least a floor on the number of employees that a small business would employ before a minimum wage mandate would kick in. That's about what I was thinking. Was I was working on a, t a tiered minimum wage uh, system, either based on company size or company profitability. Uh, that way, the smaller businesses are we look out for them and their interest as well, but we also support the workers. Yeah, clearly, you know, Walmart, for instance, clearly is going to. Em employ more people than you know john has a bookstore and he you know obviously has maybe two employees a little bit of a different overhead situation there uh, going back to what you had asked uh matt the other thing that i want to uh, work more against than for is personally i would like to see west virginia be doing less corporate subsidization i understand the rationale behind it it's uh, drawing businesses into west virginia but we need to spend our taxpayers in support of our citizens, not out-of-state businesses. So you would not endorse pilot programs, for instance, in the state? Payment in lieu of taxes, that's a main driver of attracting companies into the state, large ones. Not across the board. There may be certain situations where it is necessary to bring a certain, in, especially if it's in an area that West Virginia really needs people in but norm mostly no i would not support so and first off let me say that i'm not a supporter of pilot programs uh i think and i don't i'm not for building stadiums for billionaire owners i'm not for any of that sort of thing but i also recognize the fact that as bill clinton used to say you can't go into a gunfight carrying a knife and if all the states around you are doing pilot programs and you don't you're not getting those businesses. And if you're not getting those businesses, you're not creating jobs. And if you're not creating jobs, you don't have tax revenues mm -hmm. and you don't have people who are moving into your state to grow your state and improve some of the things that West Virginia for the longest time has lagged behind on, Kenny. Mm -hmm. You're right. The, that is why I said it's not a across the board, just no co corporate subsidies in general. If it is something that is truly needed in this state, then I will support it if I believe it is in the best interest of the state. But overall, I believe that it's more like it's more important that corporations pay their fair share. Do you think they're not paying their fair share now? And, and can you define fair share? Certain certain corporations definitely are. Uh, I do know that um, for one, Sheets, which is a, I believe is a West Virginia company. Uh, the they are. I think Sheets is out of Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Okay, but they operate in West Virginia. Yeah. They do have company. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. My bad, misspoke. The, but they have, seem to have a great business model. They seem to take care of their employees. That kind of thing. Sorry, repeat your question again. So. I don't even remember what the question now was. <laughs> yeah, are they fair their fair share? Uh, yeah, fair, fair share. share. Define fair share, and, and, and uh, what do you mean by it? So one thing I've noticed in Shepherdstown, especially with uh, the heavy industry that's been moving into the eastern panhandle, mm -hmm. it's been moving in before we've had the infrastructure in place to really 
make it work. I've seen 18-wheelers attempting to make turns in downtown Shepherdstown, which is entertaining, but we don't have the roads for heavy industry. We need to make sure that we have the ability to upgrade that. And through if we're subsidizing corporations and, give, and giving corporations tax breaks, the money for those improvements and for those upgrades are coming from the taxpayers. But doesn't the money for the roads, you know, it's, it's the Gordian knot, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the money for the roads Chicken comes from the tax base when the tax base in, improves by bringing in large employers. So you, without the large employers, nothing else happens. Mm -hmm. We end up with the traditional problems that West Virginia has had. And, and what about the argument that if you take a uh, agriculture land that, that is being taxed at $10 an acre, and then now it's a, a business employing 350 people, isn't that actually lit creating more revenue on, on that yeah. question matt we'll take our break we've only got about a minute left with kenny may kenny will be back with just a final segment here in very quick time here it's a two-minute break We're, thanks to kenny may for coming in his first radio appearance when he was not reading the news on this uh, station as he used to do seven years ago kenny good luck to you buddy thank you uh, uh if anyone is curious i the website is still in development uh but i do have a facebook page running for this campaign it's at stand with may Stand with May. Yes. All right, very good. And we'll talk to you again, I'm sure, before the election. Most likely.